gotta say, Old Town Cottonwoods really gone uptown. My husband and I love boutique hotels. We like to travel. A boutique hotel, restaurants, and wine tasting rooms. The Bloody Mary is like the best hangover cure ever. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Sewell, and today on Arizona Highways... Cottonwood is truly a place to escape with luxury accommodations, fresh European-inspired dining. The eateries um, are amazing in this town. I really wanted to bring the aromas mostly and the flavors back here. And a slowed down pace to let you know you've left the big city and all the stress behind. A lot of people don't realize that we are um, a river and a creek community. Today, we are crafting a weekend getaway or overnight stay that's within about four hours from Southern, Central, or Northern Arizona. I believe that Cottonwood's a walking town, especially Old Town, and you, it has so much to offer that you don't want to get in your car. We have a lot of fun on the weekends, that's for sure. We first took you on a wine tour along the Verde River a few years ago. Now, that tour comes with a new twist that starts and ends with a chic hotel in Old Town Cottonwood. One of the inspirations for the Tavern and Hotel is really there were no luxury hotels in all of the Verde Valley. Michelle Jurison and her husband own and operate the tavern along with a host of restaurants in the Verde Valley. Our inspiration for the Tavern Hotel was a hotel that um, was luxurious and not overpriced, where you could check in and get a couple of cocktails after your long day of traveling, um, as well as walking to your dinner and your drinking experiences. A chic boutique hotel nestled in the heart of Old Town Cottonwood. Just a few years ago, you might not have thought the words chic and cottonwood could be said in the same sentence. You had to go to Sedona to stay in a luxury hotel unless you were staying in a bed and breakfast, but nothing high end. But downtown Cottonwood has definitely become much more uptown and become the perfect escape from the city. The eateries are amazing in this town. So many new up and coming chefs doing their thing, incorporating with the tasting rooms, the wine. It's um, like a foodie paradise. It's really turning into a destination place, definitely. And the tavern takes your getaway to a whole new level. After check-in, you're treated to a complimentary cocktail. The rooms are simple, but elegant with bright and fresh colors that don't overpower. You can book a guest room or a suite, or even the penthouse for a truly over-the-top and one-of-a-kind stay in Cottonwood. I believe that Cottonwood's a walking town, especially Old Town, and you, it has so much to offer that you don't want to get in your car. The Tavern Inn also offers unique packages that let you relax and unwind and experience as much or as little as you want. You can even be adventurous. In fact, you might even recognize this amazing day trip. A few years ago, we took you down the Verde River to go wine tasting. This unique water to wine tour takes you downriver to the Alcantara Vineyards, where you then get out and go inside to sample one of Arizona's best wineries. Look out across the rows and rows of grapevines, and I swear you can see a little bit of Tuscany in the mountainous rocks that surround the Alcantara Winery. We're in the Verde Valley, and we're halfway between Camp Verde and Cottonwood, right uh, on the Verde River with it. The grape is part of the heritage of my wife's family with it. goes in through Paso Robles with it, with the Martin Weyrich Vineyard. And, uh, we loved Arizona. We've been in Arizona for 25 years, and she spent about four years searching for the perfect property. Bob Predmore and his wife Barbara are visionaries. When they saw the lush Verde River and the limestone hills, they knew they had found the right location for their vineyard. The Verde Valley had everything they needed. It's a combination of the sun, which grapes love, but in addition to just 
pure sunlight with it, you need a temperature differential night to day during the growing season of about 30 degrees. So that kind of puts you where you have to be in a certain region within Arizona. You couldn't necessarily grow good grapes in Phoenix because of that. You can, of course, taste the goodness of the land in a glass of Alcantara wine. And after a nice, cool, bumpy adventure on a kayak, it's time to sit down and enjoy the fruits of the Predmore's labor. It's really exciting to see people enjoy the boutique wines because you handcraft them to what you think is what people will like. I think what's especially rewarding is when we get people to come in and say, well, we don't drink reds or we're beer drinkers and so on. And they'll leave with some of our boldest and, and best red wines just because they found the taste and the flavor just really greased with their palates. Along with a wine tasting lesson, you'll also hear from Barbara and her sommelier, Kat. Why does Arizona not have the reputation for great wines like a Napa Valley? Because we're in our infancy. We're really in our infancy. Um, most of the vineyards and everything, and I think there's over 30 of them now down south in Elgin, Wilcox, and Sonoida and all. And um, there, there's approximately 15 up here, um, approximately right around here. With wineries and vineyards, there's four, four of them. And, um, and we are, we're learning to walk slowly. The Predmores planted their first grapes in 2005, and they haven't looked back since. They believe in the land and their future in the Verde Valley. We think the Verde Valley is a region that's going to go through explosive growth of vineyards in this region because of the terroir and, and the ability of this environment to really grow some exceptional grapes. I'll drink to that. After your tasting, you'll be driven back to the hotel, where you can freshen up, then take a walking tour of Old Town, and maybe stop in at other wine tasting rooms. You can shop, maybe grab a cocktail, before heading to dinner at one of the numerous eateries along the main drag. We're all about the brunch, the day drinking, the having a good time. When it's time to rise and shine, you'll definitely want to jump out of bed and across the street for your complimentary continental breakfast. But you don't have to stay at the hotel to eat at Crema. The Craft Kitchen serves up breakfast and lunch, coffee, and some unforgettable cocktails. They come here in the morning and the first thing they ask for is that ultimate mimosa. You get a split with it, and it's the Cortage splits, Blanc de Blanc. It's really nice. Grand Marnier, of course. We put about a, a little over an ounce in there. Fresh OJ. And it comes with the, the actual splits. You got the little bit of raw candy. It's sweet, it's delicious. You get some of your vitamins early in the morning. Starts the day off nice. Even if you can't drink the whole thing, you at least have to have a sip. Crema Craft Kitchen is owned and operated by the same couple who opened the Tavern Inn. They also have bocce down the street, Nick's Italian Steak and Crab House, the Tavern Grill, and a couple more restaurants in Jerome. They kind of have the corner on Cottonwood's culinary scene. Crema is known for their generous portions, as well as their generous crafty cocktails. My favorite cocktail is the one I'm gonna make right now. And this is the, the fashion for breakfast. It's my take on the old fashioned. So it's Angostura bitters, and we use pure maple syrup instead of uh, sugar. Of course, the two dashes. One large cube. And breakfast can't be complete without bacon. So we put bacon in every dish. And of course, the peel. Zest it in there. Get a little bit of the orange and a little twist on the side right there for you. It's breakfast in a glass, or breakfast of champions, as I like to call it. It's a funny drink to have in the morning, because it's pure, you know, bourbon with just a little sweetness. And their famous Bloody Mary is like breakfast in a glass. The Bloody Mary is like the best hangover cure ever, so the people that are having a good time the night before in the wine tasting rooms, and they wake up, they come and have their Bloody Mary. You get your bacon, you get your egg, you get your celery, 
do you hit most your food groups with it? I actually have a gentleman that comes in here and he has two Bloody Marys and he has everything else on the side and that's all he has. You can dine inside or al fresco year round. They even have a to-go window for a short time after they close. Breakfast, brunch, or lunch, crema is the cherry on top. Start the day off right. Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. Famed journalist Andy Rooney once said, if dogs could talk, that would take a whole lot of fun out of owning them. <laughs> well, today we are taking you to the Verde Valley Dog Agility Course in Cottonwood, where no, the dogs are not talking, but they are exhibiting some amazing skills. These are not stupid pet tricks, folks. This is genuine four-legged fun, speed, and talent. Today, it's a dog day afternoon in Cottonwood. Okay, starting now, I promise I will try to refrain from the corny dog references. Welcome to the Verde Valley Dog Agility Club. Any kind of dog can run, any breed. We had a lot of different breeds that, that can run the agility course. The agility course is made up of a series of obstacles that the dog must do. Get over, get through, and get up in the fastest time possible. Jan Tomlinson trains dogs in agility, and she says dogs are like humans when it comes to competition. Sometimes they feel stress from being in the show, because there is a lot of stress in a show setting. And then there's some days when they're just like us. They just are having an off day, and it's like, well, I'd rather be home on the couch rather than doing this. Carrie Kurtz, whose dog Zipper competes, says sometimes it gets tricky. We are racing against the clock, and it depends on the size of your dog and the yards of the course, and they measure it for the length of your dog's legs, because some of our dogs have much shorter legs than others. They all do the exact same equipment, but it is on, under the clock, and the faster you do it, the higher your score is. We're not permitted to touch the dog. That's part of the sport, <laughs> and it makes it very interesting. That's a lot of the training. It takes probably a solid year to um, get all those basics down, where they're actually running all the way through a course, and it's our job to actually guide them through the course without touching them. Dogs from the littlest to the largest take the challenge. And to quote Mark Twain, it's not the size of the dog in the fight, but it's the size of the fight in the dog. Whoops, I'm doing it again, aren't I? It just makes everything so much easier when you have trained your dog. Trucky, Susie McCallum's dog, is an agility champion. She says it's the training that makes Trucky such a good companion. Actually, I've done four or five dogs, one boxer and several goldens, and then the little uh, basset hound. They all really can benefit from the skills that are taught in agility. Some of them really like it more than other dogs. But he's standing so regal yeah. there. Oh, he's very proud of himself, yes. <laughs> If you look at some of the dogs out here that are very energetic, they like to have fun, and um, they like to run with you. To be champions, dogs have to master speed and control on that obstacle course. Shetland sheepdogs, like Q, are high drive dogs. So then what is a low drive dog? I guess it depends on what you consider a low drive dog. Jonathan Swift once wrote, that every dog must have his day. If that's the case, then today went to the dogs. Baci means kiss in Italian. And it's a game that they play in Italy as well as in America, bocce ball. If you kiss the ball, you get more points. We grew up doing that on weekends on the grass back east and just wanted to keep the authenticity of my background, my culture. 
I went to Italy with my husband uh, probably 10 years ago and just the pasta sauces and the texture of the bread and the pizza was so much different, you know, and it was just so simple. You know, they uh, never cook their tomatoes, they use only San Marzino, all the fresh ingredients that go on the pizza. They really wanted to bring the aromas mostly and the flavors back. I was told that I never was going to be able to do it by the chef I studied under, uh, that he'll send me a pizza man. Women just look pretty, they don't make pizza. And I just, per, you know, persevered and I just perfected my dough and using all the great ingredients that we import from Italy. I grew up in New England, so my style definitely is New England style Italian. And I would say with an added Southwest flair since I've been living in Arizona 35 years. All of our buildings are 100 plus years old. Um, that is one of my husband's passion, is to restore the old um, buildings. We put the oven in first. We cook everything on our menu in there. Every item, we roast all our vegetables in there. We cook our bocce balls. Um, those are our little organic meatballs. Our bread and our desserts are cooked in there. So yeah, the whole menu. I want guests to experience the full, everything that Bocce has to offer. And I think it's actually a night out where you can sit on the patio and have appetizers and cocktails around the fire pit. You can come in and have your dinner here, go back to the patio and end your night there with a dessert or cocktail. I want them to have the true Italian experience. Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Crema Cafe in Old Town Cottonwood. Please welcome Reverend Ray and the Back Porch Barbecue. has a healing quality to it, which is kind of like the nature of it. We started a first gig maybe 25 years ago down in a coffee house down the street. I write most of my songs based on uh, bad relationships, and uh, it's been really good material. So right now I don't have any good material, so we're not writing any good songs. So you're happy. I'm happy. We love it when people sing along and uh, when they're tapping on the table and moving in their uh, chair and finding their own dance spot. It just really moves us and, and that's what we're here for.
Arizona Highways Television is brought to you by Arizona Public Service and the Arizona Office of Tourism. Shows like The Pickers and The Pawn Stars, all those shows are really making an awareness for how cool antiques are. Uh, we're getting younger people now uh, who are just finding out how to either collect it or repurpose the stuff that we have. We have a lot of old metal and rusty stuff that people use for all kinds of things. Uh, so those shows are they are definitely helping the whole industry. We do some picking. We'll go to estate sales. We'll go to auctions. Uh, people come here. People know about us. We're a big enough store that we get people from Vegas to Tucson that will stop at our door with a truckload of stuff and want to sell it. We're looking for anything unusual or unique. We're a little different than most antique stores. As you can see, we have two acres, so it's not just your teacup antique store. We're looking for anything that we haven't seen before or something that you just don't see a lot of. What's hot these days? Uh, signs, porcelain signs, gas signs, uh, oil signs. We have a 1920s visible gas pump uh, that is about $3,000, and uh, it's just hard to find them. They've, they've, they've gotten old enough and thrown away. There's a lot of small items. One of them is a little purse that was from the 20s. Uh, it's a little silver purse. It has an opium bottle in it, a little bottle for cocaine, and a little compact in it. And if you didn't know what it was, you'd walk right by without seeing it. An antique is an item that's over 100 years old. Uh, collectible is something that's either, it's worth more than its face value. So it's either highly in demand or it's a rare item. Uh, and vintage is not as old as collectible. And that's a, it's a fine line where vintage stops and where vintage starts. People come from all over the country, but people who are coming directly here, a lot of California to Colorado. We have people who come specifically to come to the store. Everybody comes here. I want them to have the true Italian experience. We're all about the brunch, the day drinking, the having a good time. So many new up and coming chefs. Like a foodie paradise, it's really turning into a destination place. So we asked Michelle what she likes to do in Cottonwood and what she would recommend for you. A lot of people don't realize that we are a river and a creek community. We have really nice antique stores. Antiquing is really a lot of fun. Cottonwood could be your perfect escape. Make sure you pack some good walking shoes, a thirst for wine, and maybe a little adventure. And of course, your appetite. We have a lot of fun on the weekends, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks everyone so much for joining us. I'm Robin Sewell, and we'll see you on the next Arizona Highways.